Well, we're going to get something here. The skies are black. But the clouds are really low and she's chilly. She's in the 50s here in Wyoming. So you know that uh, one, two, three, four, that uh, four letter word might happen here fairly soon just by the temperature. Oh, so, of course, we got something different here, as I predicted. Take a look. Got some pipe and some crates. Weird, right? Eh? Out of Casper. Yeah, we had a slight change of plans, and I kind of told you something was going to happen, and I had a figure in something was going to happen because of just how the happenings that were happening. Anyway. Still rocking that middle axle up. Rides really nice. Of course, I got that crappy tire. So, uh, if you run that crappy tire, you can feel it shakes the whole trailer. So, therefore, it shakes the, shakes the nut that holds the wheel there. So, I gotta get this thing replaced. Tough to tell, but oh, you just saw it right there. It's like the price is right, the price is right wheel, eh? Where is it here? Bump, bump, you see it right there. Anyway, I've just been uh, awestruck looking at some of the scenery out here, and just the cloud formations are pretty cool here today. I'm at the uh, port of entry here, Wyoming. The old pre-pass, they must have it turned off because they uh, they called me in. So I just drove in and they give me the green light to carry on and get the heck out of here. So, so yeah, this is what we got. Change of plans. They took the stuff that I had and they gave it to two other guys because there was nothing going on. Working the hustle, you know. I got to know everybody, and and uh, around here we got three different types of trucks. We got company trucks, we got mileage trucks, and we got percentage trucks. And anybody that's been following for a while knows I'm on percentage now. I spent the full year on mileage, my first year running the U.S., just to get a feel for the company, the freight and where we were going and all that stuff all the terminals and then uh, this year i went on to percentage so we uh hustle a little bit differently than the mileage guys so freight was pretty light for the mileage guys so they split my load up for them and gave them a couple little other things so i had twenty six thousand pounds they split it up between the other two guys as they would have only had ten thousand pounds going so they each ended up with about 22,000 pounds going north. And then terminal manager says, yeah, what if you just kind of stick around till tomorrow? We got a, uh, we got word that this load's coming up. So, yeah. So there's a, I did a couple pickups on this one. And then, you know, you wait around Fridays. You never know what's going to happen, right? So, yeah, we got some more calls and we got some more stuff. So that's how you do it. And this is 38,000 pounds. So the guy that's on percentage is happy. The guys that are on mileage are happy because they're not pulling any weight. And uh, yeah, the company is still making money. So, you know, the mileage guys, they still have to haul some weight. Otherwise, uh, the company don't make any money, right? And of course, us percentage guys, we would take it all. We'll take it all, because we're greedy bastards. What do we got there? They're sure pretty, you know? All right, let's get out of here. action we also have another rattle that I gotta handle it's 
inside my door so and don't worry I've checked inside outside upside down so it's inside the door panel so yeah that takes a little more finesse to fix that so when I said my pre-pass went off that's this thing right here so for those of you that don't know where it's mostly everybody that's in trucking knows what that is uh, it allows you to bypass the scale if you have a good score if your company has a good score on your uh, your motor carrier profile and then uh, as you're coming up to the scale it reads your plate and reads my record in there as well and uh, the company's record across the nation and so it'll the guys in the scale guys and girls excuse me in the scale can set it up so that they let guys with the pre-pass pass by if their records are good or they can uh, set them up to pull in everybody and in Wyoming they pull in everybody a lot so today was the day but I haven't had to pull into this port entry in uh, oh I don't know a month and I'm passing by it about well, I pass by it about eight times a month, so we've been good. It's been good. Well, we have arrived. Oh, that's all I gotta do? Oh, that's easy. I can do that 45 times a day. All right, we're gonna drop the trailer. So what I'm gonna do is, this is what I do. I don't touch that one. Pull on the trailer brakes. Put the little shift sucker into reverse back up into the trailer a little bit just a little torque on it brakes on and now we're jammed into the trailer so it should be easy to drop it pull the pin all that fun stuff there's what we do open that up grab the gloves we don't do anything without gloves on okay now I gotta dig 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 I don't always drop my trailer so we keep this sucker way in the back so this is for the pin there but first things first we're gonna go and drop the air if I leave a loaded trailer for more than a day or actually anytime anytime I drop the trailer I drop the airbags anytime so what it does is it shoots everything forward the trailer moving even though I got the brakes on so what happens you dump the airbags in that trailer 
and it pushes everything forward. Look at how much strength that is. The brakes are on the truck right now. Crazy, hey? Keeps moving. So that's why always dump the air before you put your dolly legs down with a loaded trailer especially because if you have an air leak in your suspension and it starts dropping throughout the weekend it's going to be pushing forward and if you're not hooked to a truck it's going to be pushing this trailer forward and eventually it'll just collapse these dolly legs those dolly legs are so much weight they'll sit in the ground and that full trailer will just fall forward collapse those up underneath and you'll come in Monday morning to pick up this trailer and you'll be like hmm I don't remember leaving it on its nose like that anyway well, growling. ground's pretty strong around here so I'm not too worried about putting anything under these dolly legs I'm not gonna put them right on the ground just yet just a little bit off because there's still a lot of torque like the trailer was pushing this truck so there's still a lot of torque on this right so but because there's some torque so as you can see, I'm just grabbing this handle. We gotta give her the old, give her the old Hasselhoff there. We'll pull these bad boys off. Put these away. Nice, so they don't bounce around on the highway. Because we're gonna. The whole reason we're dropping this here is we're in Calgary, and my first drop is in Calgary, and they don't work on the weekends. You can see she's still wanting to push, right? So, put you back in there. Let me just clean that one day. Not today. Okay. Here's what I do. All I'm doing, my foot is on the brake. Release the tractor brakes. There's a lot of tension still. It's still pushing me. There we go. I take that tension off, right? And then, that's just air escaping the suspension on the truck. Because obviously, dolly legs have taken over a little bit. Well, they're still there. So I just get them so they're just, so they just touch, just like that. So they just touch. And then I'll dump the air in the truck. It'll dump down and everything will be nice. The sector's not going to move forward and back. Nothing. It's going to drop nice. So yeah, my first drop is in Calgary. Monday, so. I live about an hour and a half north of here. So I'm going to go home. For tonight, tomorrow. And uh, come back Monday morning, deliver. The Calgary stuff, and then work my way up to 
Leduc or Edmonton area and deliver the rest. So then I come in here. I got so much stuff hanging here. And then I'm going to lower my suspension. Brakes in. I let her lower for a little bit. Took my foot off the brake. Just release a little bit. And just like that. We are clear. See, no big clunks, no big the thunk the thunks. Nothing like that. Just nice and smooth. Takes a little bit. No, don't forget to fire that guy back up again. We need suspension. Okay, I'm going home. I'm going home. Got a funny story for you though. Hold on. I'm trying different camera angles. I gotta get better setups. Some of the places we see are pretty darn cool. I got a funny story for you though, as I always do. I got a lot of stories, so if you guys stick around, you'll hear some pretty funny ones. Let's just get up to speed here first. I guess I don't need uh, sunglasses on pretty dark but I like them I like my sunglasses here's a little trivia for you who sings I wear my sunglasses at night so I can so I can see something blah 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 he's a good Canadian boy anyway So the story, so this morning I went for breakfast with another guy. I like breakfast. I like breakfast morning, noon, and night. Anybody else out there like that? I can have breakfast all the time. I don't know why. I just really like it. It's lighter. You know, nobody's forcing you to eat vegetables. <laughs> I know, I gotta eat my vegetables. I had a salad today. Anyway. So we're sitting there, we're chatting, and I says to the girl, hold on, I gotta plug you in. Tell me, anyway, so we say to the waitress, she goes, here's your coffee, anything else for you? And we just said, no, just keep that coffee coming, you know? You see an empty cup, fill that cup up. Just keep it coming and you'll get a good tip. Yeah, we joke around. We've been, you know, a lot of these women, you know, you see them all the time, so you joke around with them, right? But it reminded me of a funny story when I was a little younger. We went uh, golf trip. I like doing golf trips with some boys, right? And uh, Kimberley, British Columbia. You guys ever get a chance? Head down there. Beautiful country. Lots of fun. Anyway. This one particular time I went these guys. Now I grew up with a guy named Sean. Great guy. Always loved money growing up. Always had money. One of them guys, you know. Anyway, he's telling us this story while we're golfing. Because this must have been back, uh, he was in university. He got a, he got a degree in commerce, okay? And then he had gone to Toronto to go work for a bank, RBC I believe, and they send him to Toronto because he wants to be an investment guy, right? He wants to be an investment advisor. Anyway, I always do background stories anyway, so this is the background of why, why this story came about. So while he's there, he's with some high rollers with RBC, right? So he's at this bar, this fancy bar in Toronto, and the waitress comes by and he gives her a hundred bucks and says, I don't want my glass empty the rest of the night. I hope, if you see it empty, I hope you're coming by with a full one. Anytime you see me, he says, and this is, 
this will be, uh, you know, just uh, this will be a fraction of the tip you get. He says, I never had an empty glass. He says, a quarter full glass, and she was putting another one in my hand. He says, every everywhere she I was, she was there all night. We had a great time. She was a great waitress. He says it was just the best time ever. Because you didn't have to worry about a drink, right? That's genius. That's awesome. So, we're in Kimberley, BC. So then we go out that night. And it was kind of a sleepy town. It's more of a ski town. So it's a little sleepier in, in uh, I think it was about June that we went golfing. But then about 7 o'clock, this live band comes and the whole thing starts taking off. And it's just full of people now. And now there's wait, you know, there was just one server while we were there having pizza and a beer. But then once it started taking off, there was about more servers, right? So, you know, I'm a high roller, you know, so the server comes up and I say to her, I say, hey, I give her 50 bucks because that's all I had on me. I said, here's 50 bucks. I don't want my drink to be empty all night. She says, okay. So I'm drinking along and okay, that drink's empty and I'm like, what the heck? I can't find her anymore. She left. <laughs> she was done her shift. <laughs> she didn't tell me or nothing. Oh. Yeah, real high roller. Yeah. So I don't recommend trying that in Kimberly. And I don't really recommend trying it anywhere, but give it a try. It might work for you. You know, this guy might not, it doesn't always work for him, but uh, it might work for you. Just a funny story for you before the weekend. Hope everybody has a great weekend. I'll be home tomorrow, Saturday. Deliver all this on Monday. Taking a week off. I've got some stuff to do on the truck. i got a high pressure fuel line that's ooh, leaking, believe it or not. It's uh, seeping, so it's obviously pressure is getting through there. Yeah, I'll show you that. I've been fighting an oil pan gasket for the longest time, so uh, changing that, changing the oil. Um, and that's about it. So that's all going to be done this week. So I'll try and show you all that. And uh, everybody have a great weekend. All right, bye for now.